Hey. Is this running? It so is. Welcome. Um, this is the first round of the tournament for me. And since it's double elimination, you will hear from me at least once more. Um, we're waiting for Mike to show up. So I've set up the game. It's 7 o'clock. My time breakfast. Getting up early on a Sunday morning because, uh, of course, the first round of drawing is between uh, a fellow who lives in Seattle, Washington, and me, who lives in the UK. As you can tell by the glorious accent. Now, I normally open to USSR, but I've noticed that Mike has only played 15 games and only has a 4 4 win record with USSR, and a big win record with the USA. So I'm only going to bid one. Assuming that's what his opening bid normally is, or he may choose to open USA with no influence. Da -da -da. The usual salutation. Uh, so you see we started with 90 minutes on the clock, but we have agreed that we'll only play for an hour on each clock. Um, Obviously, Mike would like to be finished by 1 in the morning his time. Uh, and I usually play 45-minute games online, uh, which I know does not allow a lot of thinking time and will be frowned upon by the better class of Twilight Struggle players, uh, which is probably why my rating is in the doldrums compared to theirs. Uh, so, unfortunately, I got the bid right, but the uh, end scenario means I continue to play to USA ASL. So that's fine. I live with that, and I've got the classic... De Gaulle duck and cover option. Ah, oh, no, I'm not paying attention properly, which is a great start to the game. Enturian is USSR. <laughs> okay, well, at least he doesn't have the De Gaulle duck and cover. Um, da -da -da -da. Not quite sure what Mike means there. Uh, okay, so um, with one extra influence, and I have socialist government. Um, so obviously four, three. Uh, he's open in Yugoslavia as well, so old school. Um, interesting. So he's he's vying for instant domination. It's an interesting setup. Uh, ah. Um, so my my instincts are normally to open four four so so with yes four four two if we had to with a one it's to influence I could put one in Iran, and maybe he holds independent red so he's happy with Yugoslavia. Um, I'm going to be gun shy, with what I don't see as a typical standing starting setup, and I am going to put an extra one into Italy, which may be my first mistake of many with one influence, and I welcome any and all comments. That's why I'm recording. Um, so, um, I'm prepared to give him a crack. With, uh, with attacking. And I see, yes, 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 okay, fine. Uh, an initial mistake here already is that I could have just played 4-3 and one in Iran and duck and covered to stop him trying to coup. Um, so I can duck and cover and prevent any coup anyway. Which still seems like the best option because I don't really want to open US Japan. And obviously everything else is USSR. When I throw a handful of cards like this. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, so I will open Duck and Cover. I will prevent Europe from being stored. He's gone with the good old Space Tracker. Um, that may stuff up his plans if he did have European scoring. He must also have East European Unrest. Um, I would expect him to have East European Unrest and Independent Reds to open something like that. Um, so yeah, the interesting thing about Mike, so his rating's a couple of hundred points higher than mine, but he has only played 15 games. 
Um, and this is obviously the trouble with the ELO type ratings. They'll be very swingy to commence. Um, and I'm interested to see how he plays, basically. Anyway, let's talk about my opening hand. I want to hold D-style, which means I want to play De Gaulle into an empty France for 3-1. Um, Socialist governments is an empty round. Suez, I'm going to lose one on. Um, so what am I looking to do? Um, this is my only card that I can play with some sort of impunity. I'd like to play De Gaulle into an empty France, so I can 3-1 it. I'm going to have to flip on Korean War, um, because I'm not going to have chance to control another country next to it. So I'll be playing Korean War and then playing two straight into Korea if it, if it succeeds, because obviously I'll be only 2-1 in that case. If Korean War fails, then I have the option of playing into it to control or using the opt elsewhere. Vietnam Revolt, I'm going to have to play at the end of the turn, and I'm going to have to play into Malaysia to make sure I'm not completely stuffed trying to get to Thailand. It does coup Iran, and it's a pretty big one. So, to start, um, huh, when all options are kind of gross. Um, so, let's see, let's see, let's see. I, I still like the idea of spacing Suez, unless I build into Lebanon and Egypt and then use Suez basically as an empty round to play back into the UK and, and um, Israel. Obviously, I need access to do that. So, I'm going to start to make sure I have presence in the Middle East. I'm not happy about it. I really like doing this. It's giving ops. It does fail, thankfully. So, I'm going to put one into Lebanon for presence. And I'm going to put the other one into Korea and say, if you want it, you take it with the China card. If he takes it with the China card, that's fine. Uh, one of the things I've been trying to get to grips with in this game is uh, accepting, so I mean I've only played online less than 100 games and I think the AI can only teach you so much as everyone knows, um, but I've noticed that the really good players do not play the China card lightly, and he does straight away which is fine, uh, and he does want to take South Korea immediately, you know, honestly I'm happy with that, I have a chance to flip it later on with the Suri, um, he's given me the tempo, um, and I might use it. I might use it for an empty action round, frankly. So again, I'm not. I'm not delighted about this. Although I suppose I've got the. I've got the last coup as well. I suppose what I want to do now is use U.S. Japan to try and coup Iran. It's a big coup. I'm not delighted again. So it's only 50-50 to wipe it out, and I'm only a third to take the coup. But Defcon three. I need the mill ops. I want to drop Defcon to coup so. Def Con to two, so he can't play any more silly buggers, especially in places like Panama, if he chooses to expand that way. He doesn't have domination in Asia, and this would give me uh, domination and him no presence. So I think it's the best option, although it's a big ask. Here we go. Pretty good. Uh, I'll take that, even if people have done some reviews and say the dice are skewed towards ones and sixes. On this occasion, five is fine. So this now puts him in rather the back foot. So, so apologies for any swallowing noise. Being British, I have of course got a cup of tea to go with the game. Uh, he'll probably play into Iraq to balance things out. Um, if he's got Asia scoring, he'll play into Afghanistan for domination, and I just start playing into Southeast Asian countries. Um, I say just, but obviously I'm now left with all Soviet cards. So. He's, he's dumping Asia scoring quickly for two points. I can live with that. Um, he's still giving me tempo. Um, at this point, I feel like I should be getting in the space tracker as well. So I can either play Suez Crisis, which I think I will. It's empty. I'm just going to put it straight back into um, Israel in the UK. It's boring, but it gets rid of a nasty card straight away. Um, the Middle East is, is fine for now. He can't do any more damage in Europe then, so I, I, I kind of like doing this. It's not delightful, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it. But that takes a card out of the deck, and of course, he'll be well aware with that gone, when I play 3-1 into the goal, and again, feedback's genuinely welcome if anyone does actually watch this. Um, I'm kind of tipping the hand that Suez is gone, so now when I play the goal and it's 3-1 in France, Will he say, ah, I've immediately got to start ops 
boring here um because um because Suez is gone if I don't opt towards a goal then I'm going to be running into trouble for that reason I'm now probably thinking I'm going to space Vietnam rather than play it socialist governance for an empty action round and an AR6 with de Gaulle in the hopes of getting Truman um to lock up from uh so yeah, I've already had quite a good run of luck there, because I should have put extra influence into Iran for AR1 rather than Italy, since I was ducking and covering. Um, okay, so again, he's now giving me two targets for independent reds, which is interesting. Um, I'm going to space this, and I'm really hoping to space it, because obviously with him captured Nazi sciencing, that's bad. So uh, if he does space something, he's going to be able to get to the two point quicker and start spacing bad cards as well. So that is rather chagrin for me. Uh, not best pleased about that. Um, nevertheless, that's the way the space race goes. He has got true men curses. Um, so that does make France a trickier nut to crack. Uh, but that's part of the game. Um, the good cards sometimes disappear quickly. Okay, so he's got his presence in Syria. I'm going to give him Socialist Government as an empty action round. He's probably going to take two out of Italy and one out of West Germany. But obviously being an empty round, there's no purge. I am just going to go straight back in there. Okay, so... Um, we just go straight back. Repost. So we've got no CIA. Let's see what, see what Mike says about that. <laughs> I mean, so um, I had a four op card. Uh, socialist government is empty. I managed to play two heads at no cost. Korean War didn't fail. Um, so I see his point. I had a lot of Soviet cards, but I disagree it's bad. I mean, it's it's manageable and controllable. Um, if he doesn't have Europe scoring, and I can play into De Gaulle, and he doesn't start opt warring for it, and he's now given me containment, so I can actually take, take France. Um, okay, so he's, he's covering Middle East. Um, because of containment, because it's AR6, I'm absolutely playing De Gaulle. And I am putting all the influence into it. So I don't need to worry massively with Suez gone as well and socialist government. That's the end of round one. Um, or I'd say on a shared. He didn't score Asia at domination. Um, okay, and, and again, this is a good hand, you know? So you, you, what goes around comes around. Um, I'm... I guess I'm purging him. Now, I know a lot of people say think carefully about whether or not you purge people because, you know, are they going to get a lack of benefit out of it? Um, he's already built a, a decent array of countries. I don't have independent reds. So if I purge him and Europe scoring does come out, what am I looking for? I'm looking for him to fail a coup of Iran. I'd I need to take Greece, Portugal, and Canada, which gives me 7-5 because he'll take Turkey. So I've got a plan to domination. Um, I can build into Thailand, uh, and I've got I've got a sheaf of cards that I can play fine. I want to play CIA created this turn because I would like to put it back in the deck for turn three. So definitely purge. Nothing else is more attractive. I can of course East European unrest, but if I think he's got Europe scoring for some reason, then I could do that in AR five, and then he can play AR six at a lack of domination. So I, I like red to get purge. Um, so we're going to go with that. And he's doing the Middle East, which makes me think um, he may he may play Middle East and scoring straight off the bat here for three points. Three? Yeah, three. I do know what I'm talking about sometimes. Uh, or he may coup Iran and try and go for, for more. No, he takes Middle East scoring straight away. So he gives me the coup again. And I do want to coup Nasser straight out. So... Um, The alternative is I play. I have to play a four ops card to lock up, and he may expand into Libya. This this is a chance to get him out straight away, so I am going to do it, and it does succeed, which is delightful. 
Um, I probably want to expand into Afghanistan before he can play there too. I know Asia scoring is gone. We're now looking at Europe scoring. Um, yeah, I mean, I could hand it back the China cards, take Greece and Spain in one go. But I've got Canada as well. I mean, he, again, I don't want to second guess with only 15 games under his belt. But, I mean, he played a lot of Baltic states very quickly. Um, knowing independent reds is a factor. I mean, Warsaw Pact still to come, so he can boot me at some point. So he's got fallback there too. He's inventing Warsaw Pact. It makes me think he's got to have Europe scoring. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call his bluff on that, and I'm gonna say you want to race in Europe. Now I'm blue, and I put the other one into Afghanistan. So he's probably going to repost by taking Bulgaria or Turkey. What he should do, of course, is play into Spain, Portugal, which is one I can actually compete on. Um, but I'll still have Canada. I mean, it could end up, uh, and again, I mean, theory makes this point, which is you rarely score more than a point in Europe. Everyone is fighting for it. Domination doesn't come along very often. Um, but because he gave me the coup. I've got the mill ox, so that's some points this turn if he doesn't cash. He's given me special relationship, so I guess I put that into Canada rather than worry about France breaking, because I'm saying, well, thank you very much. I will probably take another country. So he should take Spain, Portugal here. I think he'll, he'll play Bulgaria and Turkey, and if he does, that's an error. Okay. Oh, he's had the purge. Well, I mean, what do I know, eh? Um... So I guess, do I play Eastern European Unrest to take Turkey? I think I like that. It, I mean, it puts him on the back. It can, now he's warsawed up here. I can't do a lot of damage there. So I think I'm going to take Turkey, which is obviously also good for Cuban Missile Crisis. Now if he takes Spain and Portugal, I take Canada. So I move CIA up. Um, I'm also planning on recording these. Because I have noticed when I play on the phone, I do get sloppy and I play quickly. I play scoring cards out of sequence and give my opponent a chance to dominate somewhere. Um, I'm thinking by talking even to no one, if no one listens, uh, I'm rationalizing my decisions. It may be post hoc rationalization on my part, but I go for it. That was likely to fail, but he's got his mill ops, which he was probably also worried about. And obviously when you're under purge, eventing isn't a bad thing. So I am going to... What am I going to do? Five, four, five, six. I'm going to, I'm still going to hold D style. Unless he blockades me. So uh, I'm going to hold on to Cambridge five for as long as possible because I don't want him to know I have Europe scoring. I'll put, uh, oh, no, no, no. I think, I think I've got to go ahead and take Spain, Portugal. I've got to say, you know what? You're dominated. Deal with it. So that puts me up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five. He has no obvious easy route in. So what I need to do now is over protect. France and West Germany. Um, I don't need to worry about Willy Brandt until the mid-war, but obviously if he breaks West Germany and I can't respond and he plays Europe scoring for zero, that sucks compared to taking it for five. So AR5, I'm probably going to CIA create it into Afghanistan. And I'm going to then use Cambridge 5 on the last AR um, to shore up France and West Germany. Or I may... Um, I may shore up France only... I mean, socialist governments could come out and get in turn three. So this is probably Marshall plan. Oh, no, it's independent reds, which he had the UN intervene because he's worried about. Um, okay, did no pack war come out? Didn't think so. So um, I could use the China cards to play two, two, and one into Malaysia. Uh, he then flipped Pakistan. So I have to go two, three. I'm not sure how I feel about that because he's giving up the China cards, but I've got Europe more or less sewn up for now, and I need to start pushing back on Asia. So if I go two, two, and one, And then I'll use, um, okay, uh, again, I'm not delighted about that. Tell me if you think I'm better off holding it in the early war. I expect him to pass it back, maybe even turn three. Um, 
he seems to be at the phase of the game I was at where I think the Shrine of Card scene is a bonus four option. It's lovely to play. Obviously, Indo-Pack War. Oh, he's got it, and he's going to go for it. So one in six. Fail. Fine. So I am going to put CIA created into Pakistan to prevent him flipping it. And that puts it back in the deck to turn three. So I managed to hold D-Stall to turn three, and I get d Cole to go with it, which is glorious. Uh, if it, uh, it wasn't for the fact that at least one of them is going to be played this turn. So I've got a space one. Headline one. That's a bummer. Um, now, he knows I have defectors because it's turn three. So he may be cheeky and try playing Europe scoring. So obviously NATO's due to come out as well. That hasn't come out. So I think when you've got Europe looking like this, you kind of feel like you're a complete muppet for playing Marshall Plan. But I think Marshall Plan's important here. It defers NATO, and he'll still want to try and brush away Italy at some point if he can, or cause some damage. Um, and I want to make sure I score because he's. I mean, yeah. If I can, if I assume that he'll coup Middle East to start, he'd like to coup Iran because then if he gets Indo Pak back out, he can go Pakistan at at five or six to flip. Um. All right. I like Marshall Plan. I want to shore up France. Socialist governments will still drop it below. Um. But we know Europe's scoring's come out. We know he's holding it. It's as simple as that. Um, so I'm not, as you'll see, I'm not an assiduous card tracker. So we know he's got Europe scoring. We know he's got uh, NATO. We've seen all the other fours come out. Um, you know, I in five year plan. This is where a card list is always great. And I should have one to hand. And actually, when I played Wise Bar in person, I did print them out. So he's purging me. Um, I can, I can understand and respect that. So I'm going to overprotect those. I'm going to take Canada. I'm going to increase these ones and Italy. But I've got a special relationship. If he triggers NATO, I'm gonna put two in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna absolutely sure. I'm gonna say there's no way you're getting Italy, basically. So uh yeah I didn't defect his and the price of that is being purged. Um but I feel that that's a fair price when you also consider the fact that if he had played Europe scoring, knowing I had defectors, I would have looked like a complete spud. Uh, so, uh, 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 you know, that, that is what it is, uh, and I will, I'll take it. So I expect him to coup Iran, because he wants to flip it to Pakistan. He may coup Egypt, so he's got access to Libya, because obviously with Nasser gone, he's out of luck. Or he may coup Panama if he's being expensive. He's going Egypt, and all he does is clear it out. So now, in the hopes of CIA created, I am absolutely playing Fidel. And I'm going to put Fidel into Egypt. And I'm going to say, all right, you can't play CIA anymore. So I can now only space D-Stell. Oh, man. He's going to blockade me as well. Um, under Purge. So I'm, I'm going to lose West Germany, I guess. Um, so that is going to result in a, in a neutral score. I've got enough side nations that it shouldn't be a big issue i'm hoping he might play nato beforehand although at this point i guess he wants to he wants to dump out my west german influence so that's a shame he's going to go into the early war with a decent score this might be a chance for him to improve his winning record as ussr <coughs> i say hellowly it uh, looks like he's probably also got Middle Eastern scoring here. Um, because he's starting to panic about Middle Eastern states. He knows I don't have European scoring, so I can play Cambridge 5. And I can say, all right, I'll race you. So, um, we're going to tie sooner, but obviously the more I distract him from the potential blockade Europe debarks, uh, the better. So I'll, I'll keep distracting him. Although at this point you might say, oh, you don't have Middle Eastern scoring, I don't need to worry, and he'll blockade me. Um, so I'm thinking Olympic Games and defectors into Libya to maintain domination. 
Hopefully NATO pops up and I can special relationship to PVPs. If that happens after blockade, so much the better because I can put it in West Germany. I'm going to have to space D cell and I'm going to have to play, am I? D12, 3, 4, 5, 6. No, 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 I can't count. 3, 4, 5, 6. I can at least hold D toll. So he's starting to space NORAD. I suppose now that I've got Canada, it doesn't seem like a bad idea. So, uh, with the mid war coming, I don't want to expand into Thailand because he'll start brush warring potentially. Um, so I'm going to play a defectors into Libya. Um, it's a good thing I can't count because I was panicking about Daystar and Daycol both being in action. Uh, so, got four cards left. He's spacing independent reds. He'll probably hit this for the two. No, okay, I got lucky in the space race. I can live with that. So I'm also going to take Libya. <coughs> At this point, Middle East is, is looking all right. Obviously, this helps guard against OPEC as well. At the moment, OPEC scoring one or two, not five, six, or seven. So AR5, I'm going to space D cell and AR6. So I, I assume, yeah, blockade, and I have to say, no, can't do. That sucks. I'm going to space D cell. And I get my track on the victory. And he's going to play Europe scoring for zero. Always a little compliment. So he goes into the early war with an advantage. I mean, we say pass score is five for the USSR. And he's going to score um, going to score to seven now. I mean, so I think Panama, but I don't like leaving West Germany empty because the four of cards can take it. So I'll put one in there and I'll say, you want it? You got a race. So we come out. And he gets the advantage in the early war. So, uh, where are we at? We've got Asia scoring, which I can probably only at best share honors on because he's already got two places. I can take China off him and I could five year plan him, but then obviously there's a risk I'll pull duck and cover. Um, Camp David Accords will stop Arab Israeli war, but that's not likely to score anyway, but it's a great event to have. Junta means I can drop DEFCON in the, in the AR if he doesn't, you know, we will bury you or something. Um, so, I think I'm going to open Junta in the hopes of preventing DEFCON from being an issue. Because obviously if he queues Panama, he's got entry to South America as well. Uh, and Central America starts to look very hairy. So... That's what I'm doing. Vietnam Revolt, so he wants to race for Asia. So I'll put two into Panama. And it's silly, but I'm going to coup Cuba to drop DEFCON. And of course it fails. Cuba is incredibly resilient. So I would ideally like to score Asia at zero. If he takes Thailand, I'm going to have to start playing into the Southeast Asian countries and try and stop a, uh, a race for domination. This is a decent hand for America. I want to score Kitchen Debate for the point. Um, Comic-Con is, is totally empty. Um, Europe's gone, but I want to play back into West Germany at some point just to re-establish re the grip. Um, but not immediately. I want to play Camp David probably for the event because it'll make Israel even more unattractive to play into. So Eastern European unrest and Comic Con. Are. So South Africa is good for him. So he's gone straight into Thailand. Um, I will use Comic Con and I'll say okay you want a race. There we go. Although I do hold I do hold um Nixon, so I can take China card off him as well if I wanted to. He can't play into India until he plays into Burma. So if I play into India, he'll probably play into Burma as a repost because of Indo Pakistan, which again is in the deck. 
It's risky playing into India because I give him a one-third chance. But he's probably more likely to play into Burma once I've done that than uh, into Malaysia. But if he does play into Malaysia, then I can play into Indonesia and Philippines and we just end up in a bit of a an ops race. So I expect him to play into Burma here and then I'll use Eastern European and rest to play around the corner. So yes, I, uh, I can't five-year plan because uh, of the risk of duck and cover. I want to space decol, and I want to space it sooner rather than later so he only gets one attempt at the 2DT tracker. So, I mean, I could hold five-year plan. I want to play Kitchen Debate for two and Camp David for one. I want to play Asia for zero if I can. Um, and I might want to use Nixon to take China off him because obviously that makes your theory even scarier. Um, if he plays China, which he may do, I'd be very happy if he does early, early in the game. If he does play it, I'll then play Nixon for the 2VP, mm, like as not. Um, although I got DEFCON suicided by being grain sales in a headline and then Nixon to take China off me, leaving me no option but to, uh, to play CIA. So that's always a, a, a dazzling thing when, when people don't think about other hand shortening options like Nixon, but remember five year plan and the like. So let's see where they go now. I'm thinking Burma. So NATO's in action. Unfortunately, I had to play special relationship. So he does take Burma. And he moves into Malaysia. So where are we at in the race? He's got seven. I've got one, two, three. So it's it's starting to be a, a little tricky there. But I will play influence one and two, and I'll say okay. Play one into Taiwan as well. Do I play one into Japan? Um, because then it's 3-3, three, three, isn't it? So I, I need to fear Southeast Asian scoring, obviously, which is already scoring quite nicely for him. <clears throat> but I'll play one into Japan as well. So I will do it with East European unrest. So I could hold five-year plan for the next round. Because obviously if he has US-Japan in his hand at the moment, he's going to love seeing me playing into Japan because he's, it's now making that four-op card only a two-op card. For him, for, for me. Um, I will probably use Nixon to take China off him now, because I can then slip Thailand if he forgets to overprotect, which he may do. Uh, or I can do that AR7. But I'm going to have to play into, I'm going to have to use 5 year plan now to play into Japan, I guess. Um, we'll see what he does. He may get greedy and use the China card to throw ops at something. I mean, he may even throw it into Japan, but. Okay, so he has got Southeast Asian scoring. He plays it for a handsome sum. So I'll play five-year plan to say, okay, we're neutral here. Um, and I'm going to move into Angola with the hope of moving into Zaire, I guess. Or do I offer him a coup target in South America? I can't respond to it because I've got to play Asian scoring. So I'm going to put another one in West Germany and say, now you really have to chase me for it. Willie Brandt's always helpful, but there you go. So, yeah, I've got to try and play Asia at neutral. Obviously, if he now has Japan, he can play it freely, and he can really sprig with me there. Facing grain sales, and he succeeds. Um, well done, him. I've got to play Asia for nothing, which means he gets another chance to space. Oh, it's plus one, of course, because I've got Afghanistan. Big whoop. So now I've got a space decol. Um, I might still take the China card off him. CIA is still in the deck. What a gent. Um, so where are we at? Africa's totally empty. He can expand into Algeria. Uh, but I'm at the point where I do need to start scoring some points. So I'll play Kitchen Debate for the two. I'm swithering about Camp David. Um, but that does help shore up. Put some influence into Jordan to be really steady. A Muslim revolution is still a concern, of course. Which I mustn't forget. So he didn't open with We Will Bury You. It's interesting. Right, so that appeals to, to, to Camp David. 
Um, very Canadian. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'll say, all right, let's Camp David. That gives me domination again. So if he does have Middle Eastern scoring, he might start to get sweaty. So I've got Kitchen Debates to bring it back down to nine. I could play Nixon or I could use Nixon to dump a two in West Germany. I kind of like playing Nixon to take China off him. Chinese Revolution might take it straight back. But as long as I'm holding China as USA, a Suri is a risk. And it's a risk he doesn't like. So a bit of an uphill struggle here. I'd like to score Middle East at domination. And then I'm really basically hoping that, you know, Voice of America will protect me and OAS will help me expand into South America, colonial regards in Africa. I need to be scoring those quite heavily at this point. All right, so I'd like to move into Argentina, because the Allende is a risk, obviously. Um, that does give him another coup target, obviously, but then, you know, he gets the opening coup anyway, and his opening coup will usually dictate what scoring card he's holding. Panama Canal Return allows me access to Venezuela anyway. So I like to use OAS to expand into the bit of America South America that um, they usually have trouble with. So he wants to ops race Germany. I can always say, you know what, I'll take China off you if you want to do that. NATO's in now, so special relationship helps me out later on. And he can't score it for domination, so for him it's only a point with things laid out the way they currently are. Um, So I'm going to kitchen debates, and I'm going to say, what are you going to do for your last day, huh? And see what he says. Kitchen debates is just two points I need to grab at this point. Um, so Asia's split. Middle East is probably mine unless Muslim Revolution comes along. He'll say, nice one. That's what it's for. Uh... And he's played China, so I can now use Nixon to gain VPs. But he wants to take West Germany, and I can he can have it for now. Uh, so I can hold Nixon, actually. I'll try spacing decol, because I don't want him to get to the headline. Good. So he now only has one a turn. I, uh, one small step would be lovely, of course. Um, all right, so I don't need to worry about Sadat. Quagmire is obviously my whole card here. There aren't enough targets for nuclear subs to be attractive, um, which is a shame, but at least it stays in the deck for later on. I don't have Lone Gunman, so I can use Ask Not. Is there anything in the discard pile I ideally want to salt? Special relationship. Isn't really worth the raise. Purge is, you know, nice to hold on to, but raising Defcon is really good for, for him. So I'll keep an eye on Salt, and you know, I like everyone else except Salt's a very powerful card, and you don't just want to play it for the ops willy nilly. Um, I don't really like the idea of playing ABM Treaty in the headline because yes, of course I could coup Thailand and flip it, but Southeast Asia scoring is gone. Brush War is a massive risk with all these things surrounding it. Um, so I'm tempted to miss that. I've been we all bury you as gone. Um. I might get US Japan, in which case he loses a four op card. Um, or I might get something like Flower Power, which I can play for free. So, I mean, the only other viable headline besides ABM is Mr. Envy. And I want to hold ABM. So, Mr. Envy it is. He's going to try and flip India. In the meantime, he's got to give me a decent card. I think it'll probably be Flower Power, my gut instinct. Um, if it's US Japan, it triggers. I don't get the card. But he doesn't get four ops to play with. And, you know, that's a reasonable quid pro quo. He's basically trading four for two. And I'm trading two for nothing. Um, we'll see. And, yes, I'm just going to have to keep my fingers crossed. Because that will, of course, give... Oh, okay. So, in the end, I, I deny him a coup. Um, it fails. Thank goodness for small favours. Uh, so, that actually denies him a coup. Which means I can ABM treaty and do some crazy stuff in the Middle East. Again, there are no targets in Africa. So what I want to do is start expanding into Africa. He can move to Algeria, so that's my first port of call. Shuttle diplomacy is one of those things he'd like to trigger. I, I'd like him to trigger rather than me. I kind of want to see Middle East and gone, because then 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, actually, the subtle diplomacy will give me domination, especially if I take Taiwan for good measure. Um, but triggering shuttle diplomacy is always one of those, like, what moments? And, of course, Formosa is still in action. Kill moves to Algeria. Okay, now he's worried about the Middle East and Central America. So, I am going to use Arsenal. I'm going to regain Middle East domination. And I'm going to put one into Algeria. Algeria, it draws attention. This is the issue that I kind of have. It draws attention to the fact he should be ops-warring me there. But Algeria is as far as he can expand. And it means he's not doing other stuff. I could start a coup war in South America. Make him afraid of that. But obviously only putting one influence in Colombia is an invitation. And we just end up cooing back and forth. Um, I put one in Africa and he's got to come after me. South Africa's unrest is gone. Um, Empire collapses is still there. So I could try later on to put two in there straight away. Um, so... Um, what are my better options here? Again, this is a moment where I'm at a crossroads and I'd welcome what people think. I think one in Algeria says, uh, one in, uh, sorry, one in um, Angola says put we'll put two in Algeria. Um, one in Colombia says coup here with a big sign. But it starts a coup war and I need the mill ops too, but I could coup Nicaragua, obviously, and I don't really like my concerns. Uh, I'm going to say let's race for Algeria. You got the empire collapse is fine. I'll play in desire in South Africa and try realigning you. And I've got Algeria and I've got ABM treaty, so I could just coup it back. So yes, ABM treaty for the middle. I'm going to say let's let's go after Africa. What do you say? So obviously Uruguay being a two stability nation is also a less attractive coup target. He'll he'll probably be spending his his big ones earlier in the round. So he does have Portuguese empire. Fine. So I am going to ABM treaty and coup it back. And he's going to say, God damn it. If he's got brush war, that's now a massive, massive target. So I want to play into Zaire and South Africa ASAP to shore up against uh, a brush war. Which kind of brings shuttle diplomacy off the table. Uh, but that said, I've got Formosa and Asia Scorings come out. So if I can avoid playing the China card for as long as physically possible, um, Formosa will do the job for me with Taiwan and I'll break 4 3. He's going to try and realign Argentina. Oh no, he's going Panama. I mean, I'm at plus one, so I'll take that. Um, and that now gives me the opportunity. He obviously doesn't have brush war, so I'm going to start saying, you know what, you're going to have to start coming after Africa pretty hard. So I could space um, Kogma and hold nuclear subs. So if he does start cooing these places, I can coo him back. We're expecting the scoring, scoring cards to come at some point. He's going to terrarm me. Lovely. So we will ditch Brezhnev because I can't guarantee it will come into my hand. That does mean in the later war he's going to have a few more ops. We'll ditch Socialist Government. We ditch U2. Hey, U2. Um, I prefer to go in that plane. And we're going to ditch a uh, we're going to ditch uh, arms race because that's invariably one for him. Um, Japan is now I mean it's it's a cost neutral card it benefits us both so I might as well discard that too. It gives me no benefit and it gives him some benefit. So it's just going to be a four op card in late war for him, or if I draw it four ops, which is lovely. So I'm going to ditch the lot. That does mean I'm more prone to drawing lone gunmen. Um, we've definitely got a reshuffle coming. Uh, in turn seven. Might get it in turn six, I suppose, if we have more discards, which would be strange, but there you go. Um, so what is he going to do with this? Um, he may try realigning Panama again. I can just play into Mexico uh, for, 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 excuse me, for territory. If it does try realigning again, um, I'm strongly inclined to coup Nicaragua and realign him back. Now, he's getting influence. Uh, so he's going to say, you know what, I want to come along and play in Zaire. 
He's playing into Gulf States, which makes me think either OPEC or he fears Middle East domination. It's usually OPEC, uh, <laughs> as we know. Um, so I guess I put one into the here to prevent it flipping as easily. Um, I can also play into Colombia and make that a coup target, because I can coup back twice. And I think I'm going to do that. Flipping Zai is annoying, but I've got South Africa to break 3-2. Uh, and Algeria is not a concern. And Colonial Regards works for me, because he holds Dom. So I'm going to say, actually, look over here. So I'm going to play the distraction game. It also disin uh, disinclines him to try and realign Panama. Um, it means if he does a big coup, I've got a coup back with Salt, which is a little annoying. Salt's one of those cards you want to use something good for. Although, as the USA, raising DEFCON is terrifying. Um, because he controls East Germany, the prospect of realigning West Germany is no fun. So let's see. Puppet government is, of course, a major concern. He does come straight after Colombia. Uh, it's not a big coup. So I will coup back with Nixon. I mean, the VPs would have been nice there. Uh, but now I'm feeling more confident about South America and Africa than I was a turn ago. I want to hold nuclear subs in case he plays KG. So, you know, six, seven, maybe. He's give, so Central America is plus one for him. Uh, I'm going to space Quagmire. Okay, so we may be headline racing later in the war because I want a two and three up to the three point square if I can. He's giving me South America at a massive, massive score. Unlucky. Two scoring cards in hand. It's AR7. So what do I do? I can salt ABM treaty for crazy realignment. That doesn't do a lot for me. Uh, I can salt purge, but it'll be DEFCON 5 and he'll be all over the place. Um, so I, I don't, I'm not attracted I'm just, I'm genuinely unattracted to, to salt for salt states, but I'm going to hold it instead of nuclear subs. So to protect against nuclear subs, I'm going to put another one into Zaire, and I'm going to put another, let's see, where hasn't scored? So Middle East scoring still to come out. Uh, and I'm going to put one into Taiwan for Formosa for later in the game. And again, that may be a mistake, but whatever, talk to me on the phone. He thinks he messed that up. Um, well, yeah, he should have played. He should have played Central American scoring much earlier, I guess. Disagree? Let me know in the comments. Um, right, I've got a Suri, which will scare the bejesus out of him when I play it. Um, Alliance of Progress is only scoring me two at the moment. What I really want to do is play a lot of stuff into Mexico, Venezuela, Brazil. Allende still to come out. Obviously, Lone Gunman will be my hold card. Um, Africa's looking all right. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he coos there. If he doesn't, and Colonial Rearguards is still in play, I'd like to get into Algerian score control of Africa, uh, but that may be tricky business. Um, there's a number of cards here I don't really like. Willie, Willie Brandt over controls Germany. Um, cultural Revolution gives him the China card back, so what I probably want to do is Asuri China Cultural. So that gives him an extra card for later in the game. In terms of um, opening options, I think I start with Asuri. With Brush War still a concern, I just feel like I can't play into Thailand right now. And of course I can use the China card to flip Thailand. I want to see Brush War go before I start doing stuff like that. And of course playing the China card invalidates for most of us. So that's a reason to play Asuri, Cultural Revolution, and give him China. To give me back. Um, so if I'm playing a Syria, I'm playing two into South Korea, and I'm probably playing the other two into North Korea and saying you've got to come after that. Because by playing into Thailand, basically saying why don't you brush war it for a ton of points. Um, that also distracts him from the task at hand. He should be worried about the Middle East. He may play into Gulf states for both OPEC and to score the Middle East at zero. Uh, he may. He may coup it, in which case we're, we're, we're break even. If he coups there, that's great, because then I can push Africa for as many points as possible. 
Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm realistically playing Alliance of Progress for the op and seeing if it comes out in late war, because obviously both of these are scored, so I don't get the double advantage for Alliance of Progress. So I'm going to start with Asuri. He is brush warring, which now obviously um, I can't play into Thailand right now. Because um, he would just brush war it right back. He's probably going to go Angola at 50 50. He may go Argentina or Panama to try and control. Uh, but I don't want to make Thailand that big a target. I can still flip it with the China card if I want to. So I think I'm. Yeah, I'm I'm happy on that. So I expect to see this go towards Angola. He may choose Iran, which weakens Pakistan for Indo Pak a little. He may go Libya, which is fifty fifty. He's going Argentina. It fails. So much the better. But he gets coup. I would expect to see it in Africa or the Middle East. He should be thinking about scoring cards. I'd really like him to coup Angola, because even with a high-op card, he may still fail at five. Worst case scenario with Argentina, he coups it, he succeeds, he's got Allende anyway, we split South America 50-50 next scoring round, um, which you invariably do anyway with Allende. Um, so, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm taking a lot longer, I've taken half an hour already to get to turn six, um, but we're on track. So let's see where he goes. He goes Middle East, which makes me think he is worried about Middle East scoring cards. He may Muslim Revolution me. At this point, I just play, I mean, it forces me to play the China card, but I play back into Iran and Egypt. Um, so let's, let's say you fancy coming after me. He's got to coup Cameroon. He's got to be afraid of the scoring card. He's got to be afraid of me getting him to control. But you know what? Give him that chance. Um, so he's going to coup it. That means I have to come up with some back coup options. But I'd really like to score Africa as much as possible. And I need coup targets in return for Milop. So he's going to coup it. One would expect. It's a massive coup. Right, so what I'm going to do now is, um, obviously, it's if I play here, I invite him to play into Cameroon, uh, to Algeria. Um, he's going to, I expect him to influence drop here rather than coup back, which would be a mistake because I'll be 5-4 with, um, with domination. And then I'm just going to play it at that. Control is lovely. Obviously, if he does massively coup, which would be the right option... Ah, uh, well done him. He, he played right. But it's only a one. So... At this point, I am reluctantly going to coup with Salt. I don't want to coup with Willy Brandt just yet. That's massive. So now he says, all right, fine, I'll play into Algeria. And then I score Africa for domination. Um... I really, I mean, if I play Willy Brandt, I have to use it to play one into West Germany for it to drop back. Um, che is annoying, but obviously he'll go for Colombia and Sahara, and I use Che to coup back on. Interesting. Oh, he's going to try and realign Zaire. I mean, it's 2 2. So that was unfortunate. Um, So at this point, I say, okay, you can have Willy. Uh, and I'll put one in two. South Korea. Because I'd like that before... Um, I'd like that before Kalo 7 comes out, because I'd really like South Korea. Obviously, Formosa's less of an issue now, because I can take South Korea with the China card and it breaks 4-2 to me, um, at least until Indo-Pakistan comes out and he does flip India the next time. But then it becomes 3-3, three, three, not 4-2. So, you know, 
I think I'll take South Korea and I might just give him a point for Cultural Revolution. Uh, and then I can hold Che as well, which is not so good for me. So that all depends on whether he does realign any of these places or he tries to flip Algeria with a three op card. I'm hoping for a failed realignment at 2 2. He's been very um, hopeful with realignment. Um, all of those have been neutral so far. Uh, and, you know, I'll take neutral rolling. Um, it's, it's important, but you're better at setting up positive realignments. Right, so Central America has been and gone. So he can have that, honestly. Uh, so I play Africa scoring for the full shebang. Uh, and then... Options for round seven. I may play Che. <clears throat> and, okay, so Middle East scores neutral, that's fine. Go say ouch. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to play Che. He's going to start with um, Colombia. This is oh, it's so risky. I, I don't actually. I feel like I want to hold Che and Lone Gunman. Um, if I hold Che till after the shuffle, or I try spacing it, I'll space it because I want to see his headline. And I want to try and get there first. You know, space Che. I get to see his headline. Uh, and of course, that means in the later war. So I can play the China card in AR7 and space cultural if I want to, to try and get to the 3VT. <clears throat> and I do want to play the China card to take South Korea. I don't want him to be attracted. So he spaces the Pope, hopefully misses. He succeeds. So neither of us get to see each other's cards. Foremost is away. So I'm going to take South Korea. And then I'm going to take Taiwan for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, six, nine. Uh, he can have South Korea. I'm not. I'm. I'm usually gun shy about that. Uh, honestly, I'm just happy, have, happy having domination. So Voice of America is always lovely to have, but I certainly don't need to play it um, in a headline. I can use it to withdraw influence once he's gained it. Um, We've had the reshuffle, so we will bury these back, which means I cannot play Duck and Cover without risking DEFCON suicide. Um, because the reshuffle's been and gone, uh, it always sounds a bit surreal, but you never know. What CIA created isn't a bad idea, because I get to look at his hand. I also get to then make a coup, which drops DEFCON. And I can look for scoring cards, which, you know, with potential domination and control abounding, is really, it could be very useful indeed. So I'm going to hold duck and cover, which I'll probably end up just playing for. Colonial regards can basically frig up Asia or Africa, depending on what I see. Socialist governments is an empty action round. Uh, VOA can redress some damage hither and yon, like Mexico and Guatemala. Uh, Lone Gunman is, of course, my old card. So I'm going to open CIA created. He may play We Will Bury You, in which case DEFCON doesn't matter. It's Muslim Revolution, uh, which is nasty. Egypt and Iran will go out the door here. Uh, he's holding OPEC because we're at turn seven. So he's going to score OPEC for a pretty penny. So yeah, Egypt and Iran. I mean, Sadat may come back, but we, we've seen Sadat come and go. Uh, I'm accepting Middle East domination then. But Asia's dominating, and I've got Africa and South America. I'm still in decent shape. So Central America, um, he may score straight away. So do I attempt a coup of Mexico? Uh, he's got Sadat, so he's going to want to take OPEC first. He's going to try and Indo-Pac India again, obviously. He's going to want to play East European unrest this turn. He's also got Bear Trap. He's got Allende. Okay, so we've seen all that. Um, I'm going to try cooing Mexico. It's a big ask, but it drops DEFCON, which is bad for him. Because um, Africa's still in good shape. So he'll play Central America for five. He should do anyway. So that means I get into Egypt and Iran before he does. So I'll be flower powering. And hopefully uh, uh, Ronald Ray guns will be out fairly quickly in the late war. Uh, so with OPEC. Oh, great. Trying to card. So he's, yeah, he's, so he's doing domination first. So now I voice of America him, and he does not get Central America. Domination.
position. Um, and the last one. Hit one out of Iran. Just so that comes in. So he can get um he can get OPEC for four now or five if he plays into Iran. So South African unrest obviously is um with Angola at five is an empty round, which I can certainly live with. Yep, that seems sensible. Uh, so getting ready for tear down this wall. Hopefully the Pope comes back out. Um, I mean the other one's much of a muchness really, isn't it? So let's take Czechoslovakia out to stop him drawing into realign there. So he's going to play into Iran. So Central America's at one. I can play into Mexico. Okay, so he's going to score OPEC for one, two, three, four, five, six, which is huge. That's very nicely done by him. Um, I mean, I can get into an ops war here. I could use flower power to break Egypt and Iran. And do I have anything better to do with my ops? The answer is not really. Uh, and obviously Sadat will then give me control domination of Egypt. So we'll we'll have a little ops war here. So uh, socialist government is another empty round. I may try space and cultural revolution to try and get the three points. And of course, all the time he's doing this, he's not doing anything about Asia, Africa, or South America. He'll probably play Allende for the event. Um, I do have tempo on my side here. It gets better for America. Um, he's now lost Indo-Pak war to India. So I'm going to play duck and cover. I'm going to play into Iran. Iran hostage crisis obviously is going to be very annoying when it dumps me straight out. He's now getting five there. So I'll play one into Venezuela. He's got Panama Canal returned. So that flips me Venezuela straight away. So I'm probably going to use colonial rearguards to frig up Southeast Asia and basically say, you know what, you don't stand a lot of chance in Asia. That actually makes Thailand way more attractive, obviously, because um, if I can control Thailand and, set, and North Korea after all with the China card, I've got control of Asia, which is a pretty big score. So here's Panama Cone, he's going to say, you know what, I'm taking Iran back. At this point I say, have you six points for OPEC? Have it, because I'm not going to fight you for them. Uh, and I now have a big hold on South America and a massive target in Panama you can't chew back on. So I'm going to space cultural revolution. Success. So that's good for me. Gets to the big VP point first. He takes a six point throw peck, which brings it back down to five. We're not in war games territory. But unless Middle East scoring comes out first, I'm more likely to see a scoring card that's favorable. Uh, so I'm going to play Socialist Government, and it's going to be, to some extent, it's going to be an empty, oh, I was going to say it's going to be an empty round. This is a mistake, and I expect you to draw attention to it. He's going to plunder West Germany um, for over-control, um, because, of course, that's a Western European state. He would be wise to pull out of West Germany, and then that's basically his territory. Uh, he may take it out of France. Yeah, so that was a mistake by him, thank goodness. Um... Straight back in. He should have taken them out of West Germany. Because um, although it's over-controlled, special relationship breaks it. Um, in the end, I got lucky there. So AR7, I'm going to play South African Unrest. And if he puts two in South America, it'll be a neutral round. Uh, I've got the one mil off at the moment. So it's going to go up to five. And I'm basically, I'm really hoping Asia, South America, or Africa scoring comes out. And then hopefully we can end it with war games. If we can't end it with war games, I am the candidate for Asia control. Uh, I've got Africa control. If he doesn't play Allende for the event, then I could be South America control. So things are shaping up all right at the moment. So two in South Africa. I just put two straight back in. So AR7. We go back to CIA created to work 
out what his last card is. He's facing Bear Trap, so he's got Allende and Sadat as his two cards. So I'm going to use Colonial Rear Guards to absolutely stuff up Southeast Asia. But I'll put an extra one. Uh, so yes, that's a question. Um, I do fear Brush War. But I guess I want to put one into Thailand. And I want to overprotect the one op battlegrounds. And I'll put one more into Burma. So if I can flip that and he pulls Indo Pack in a reshuffle or something. Anyway, one for me. I'm up to four. Europe's scoring's not great for me. I can play Aldrich at the end to discard Lone Gunman, a classic America move. Um, I can John Paul, which is great. I've got Brush War, which is fantastic. I've got no way of dropping Defcon in the headline, so I'm going to have to accept the fact he's going to punch me somewhere. Uh, so I space around the hostage crisis, because terrorism's a nightmare. Or I can US inter UN intervention it. I've got a, a pretty decent round here. A Warsaw Pact has gone because he evented it. So I'm going to start with John Paul because I can play Brush War anytime. Doesn't drop Defcon. Um, and he's likely to coup. So Arms Race, I feel, I genuinely feel Arms Race is a is an American card. So he's quagging me, which I'll, um, I'll put Iran in. He's probably going to use his um, free round to repair Poland, knowing that I'm quag. Um, or he's going to basically point out what he thinks the major target is. If he tries to coup Venezuela and then events Allende, he's got South America scoring. If he tries to coup Africa, he's got Africa scoring. Um, I can now play four with US Japan into Poland and score Europe at domination, which he may not be expecting. But I've got to get out the cog first. So it goes Iran and then Aldrich if I have to, and then I can UN intervention lone gunman. But either way, I'm safe from death on suicide, which is fine. I've got, I mean, this is a great, if you look at this hand, this is a great late war hand for the US. Aldrich obviously is great for discarding lone gunman. Where's he queuing? Africa. Fine. We can have it. So Iran goes into the Quagmire. Success, thank goodness, a four, that was frightening. <clears throat> because he's going to have to, he's going to have to play more countries. You know, I'm four one, not three two. I don't need to worry about flipping for domination. So he's got to play into Africa to drop it to three points because I'm, I'll, I'll still gain the territory. So it's three rather than six. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I'm in decent shape. What I'm going to do is U.S. Japan into Poland for domination and basically say, look, you've got to keep looking other places. Um, and obviously, Cal is good for me now. One into Poland. No, so he takes that back. Fine, whatever. Uh, I'm going into Poland, which dominates. That's another thing for him to pay attention to. Uh, I could coup Cameroon um, with the intention of them brush warring Algeria for control. Obviously, he's not overprotecting Thailand. He's failed to do that all game. Um, he obviously does not see me flipping with the China card. So Andy comes in. But again, it currently means nothing. Um, I guess the question is, do I do I do some fancy realignment? So if I can realign him out, that's really good for me. But I'm going to dominate anyway, right? Because I can move into Brazil. Pat to the Betrayer is not good. I'm going to score Europe. And I'm going to say... What do you like? Because that puts him under massive, massive pressure. I mean, he's in he is in really bad shape here, <clears throat> and and I mean, so I I would have ordinarily bid USFL two, and but his winning record as the US even over fifteen games was really good, and his USFL was not hot. So he chased Colombia, which is decent. Costa Rica is a terrible option. So now the question is, do I play a really high ops card and try and realign Colombia and Chile? Or do I just straight coup Colombia? A one is bad. Okay, that's good. Back in the pink. <clears throat> so now, 
this is the quintessential late war Russian dilemma uh, for for Mike, which is I am in trouble in Asia, but I can I can quickly regroup there. I'm in trouble in Africa. I'm in trouble in South America. I've just lost Europe. So this gets me three points. Oh, no, he breaks Argentina. It's very clever. Very clever to break Argentina and only give me two. Um, five, six. I mean, I can, yeah. So if I UN intervention lone gunman, I can then play Aldrich Ames. I can play Aldrich Ames for three anyway. Five. With Brush War, I can flip Thailand, I guess. Giving him China in the late war. Yeah, I mean, it's the difference between five, six, seven, eight. It's the difference between holding and not. I'm just going to UN intervention loan government, and I'm going to say, all right, I'm taking Argentina back for now. <clears throat> AR6, I'll brush war, and I'll probably play brush war for the ops because Thailand's well controlled. Uh, I, I, no, 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 I should brush war at 50-50, Cameroon. Um, yes, fine, uh, Algeria. He's got Cameroon. I want Algeria. That gives me control. That seems like a reasonable target. So I'll AR6 there. I mean, if he freaks out in Algeria, it suggests that Algeria, Argentina, it suggests that he might hold South America scoring and want to score it neutrally. So I could always brush war in AR7 and hold Aldrich Ames, but then that kind of defeats the point of having Aldrich Ames, which was to discard Lone Gunman, which I just have done. So he's given me puppet governments. That's lovely. So I'll put one in Brazil and one in Mexico. Uh, and then I'm going to put the other one up here. Good to death, I guess. Do I? Oh, no, I put one into Czechoslovakia. To prevent him putting in there and trying to do fancy stuff with realignment. So what he does with these two ops is kind of indicative of what his last cards are likely to be. Um, if he breaks Argentina, I think he's got South America scoring. If he coups Cameroon or something else, no. He so he goes to take back Asia. I still have domination there, so I'm going to brush war. Ah, uh, yes, of course, flower power. Always forget it. Totally worth it because I've got a chance at control. So it's worth doing, right? Because if you think about it, um, that's increased this by four points. It was a 50-50 chance. So that's two VPs expected, plus the extra swing for his two VPs. And the one point for Brush War is gravy. Um, so all the James I can just play um, for the ops. I'm not discarding anything, obviously. And I probably use it to... Yeah, so he's overprotecting now. I'm going to use it to dominate in Central America as well. I'm basically saying, look, it's late war. You dominate nowhere except the Middle East. And you're 11 points down. You've got a lot of work to do. A lot of work. Uh, so I still don't have war games. The Reformer's the nasty card here. Evil Empire gets me some points too. But of course I start with Soviet Cal. I drop DEFCON. He may commit suicide. I get two VPs. I get four um, ops. I mean, this is <coughs> the go-to card. So I could Latin American debt crisis to ditch the reformer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold the China card. Um, North Seoul would be great if OPEC hadn't come out in the late war. Um, North Seoul's still pretty good because it gets an eighth action round. But obviously, having used my headline for Soviets, it's a bit bland. I can play U2 for only one VP because I know UN intervention has gone. Um, he's basically in a whole heap of trouble here. He wants Middle Eastern scoring to come out sooner rather than later. Um, I mean, if Africa comes out, the game is over. All the other ones, the game continues for a little while. Obviously, with Cal, Asia now ends the game. Um, I'm going to get to play in South America first. So he's ABM treating. <clears throat> so Cal is good. Um, I should use it to overprotect some stuff since he's going to ABM treaty. So... Uh, 
I'm going to use it for overprotection. This is Adrian treating. So Argentina becomes the obvious target here. Africa still scores domination. Argentina will at least make it 50-50. So I feel like of all the crises he has on the board, that crisis is the immediate one. Because Africa's... You know, I mean, I suppose you have to kill Africa in case I hold Africa scoring to end the game. So he'll put, he may think that way. Um, but either way, he's just got, got a lot a lot to do. He's in rough shape. Na, na, na. So, Glasnost will become an ABM treaty for me, because I'm going to space or set crisis to reformer. I can Evil Empire for an extra VP if I want. Uh, it all depends. I mean, if, if Evil Empire gets me to 20, great. But there are very few war cards that are going to come out of this phase of the game. <coughs> So I've taken about as long as I normally take to play a regular game and we're at turn 9. So it's still fairly quick. Um, I think I've made mistakes along the way. Uh, Socialist Governments was a big one, um, but I got lucky. Tell me what you think. I, I genuinely want to know what people think. If they've listened this far, you must love the game, uh, even if you don't like my style of play. Um, but yeah, I'm looking for feedback. So yes, he's probably got Middle Eastern scoring here. And he's now managing to score it without presence, which is huge. Well played. Um, you know, I respect that. But again, I don't think it's going to make the difference. I mean, it's going to bring me down to plus three, which is a bummer. That's a good realignment as well. So that was unfortunate. He had three good ones and then a bad one. Um, so, I mean, if he's got Middle Eastern scoring and sense, he's going to play it right now. Because otherwise I try and coup, and I can coup Iran because um, Iranian hostage crisis is gone. But I expect the Middle Eastern scoring comes straight out of his hand now. No? Okay, so he's going to coup Argentina, I suspect. No, Africa. A decent coup. <clears throat> so, um, I am obliged, because of the scoring differential, to play the China card. And put four into Israel. Do I have access to Lebanon? I do, don't I? But then, of course, uh, he'll get control. So, yeah, I'm going to put four straight into Israel. And I'm going to say, you no longer have presence. I mean, that's a four point swing. I don't like giving up China there. It's not pleasant. Uh, but DEFCON suicide is not really on his mind now, uh, with CIA gone. There's always grain sales, of course. Um, but Nixon wasn't played for the event. So, Nixon may come back and I can take it off in that way. But I can't afford the Middle Eastern scoring to be done without presence. Um, so I've got to accept that fate. Africa's still scoring domination. Next job is to try and get back into Argentina before he takes it. And if um, this is it, yeah, fine. So South America's now neutral. Things are now not looking as good as they were at the start of the turn, of course. Um, so I can get involved in an opt war in Argentina. Pershing. Yeah, I could play fairly neutrally. So I guess I'm going to use two. And I'm going to say, all right, let's 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 get started on an opt war. I mean, opt wars at this point in the game, with the VP score the way it is, is all in my favour and not in his. Uh, opt warring means he's got. A lot, a lot of things to do around the board, and he's focusing on exactly one of the regions. So I could Latin American one of those, and I could space the other one if I wanted to. Three, oh. What's my hold going to be? My hold could be North Sea Oil to give me eight ARs. I mean, that's a power card in round 10, really, isn't it? Um, because it gives me an extra AR on top of the extra AR to end the game. So if the game does not end, I think actually I, I like that. Hold North Seal for turn 10. And basically I can clean up a lot of mess if I have to. Although, of course, if he has terrorism, I lose a card. I can't use North Seal anyway. So it's a, it's a little catch-22. If I see terrorism go, it makes North Sea more attractive for that purpose. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm happy to opt for in South America for the time being. He's not doing anything to stop domination in Africa if he's doing that. Um, I'm currently dominating Central America, and I you know, might have the potential to coup Venezuela, realign Cuba, and after Ortega has gone, move into Cuba. Because obviously Ortega's a suicide card if I'm based in Cuba. So he's got a lot of... I mean, he's he's in a pinch here. There is no other way to put it. Um... He's got a, an uphill struggle to get even close to zero. And if he's got something like tear down this wall, then the game's over if he plays it anyway. Um, I don't know if he knows that's a suicide card because people don't read it very closely. Uh, a free coup doesn't mean Defcon doesn't drop. So, <clears throat> okay, he's peace darling. He should put some influence in Africa and one in Haiti. So he wants to put into Africa to neutralize. Now he's gone... Okay, so he's he's achieved two functions there, so respect. Um, I now have to coup in order to keep domination in Africa. And that's a one in six chance of not even taking that because we'll be five apiece. <coughs> so... Blah, blah, blah. <coughs> I'm not so worried about the 1VP anymore and flower power. I am going to coup Zimbabwe uh, big. That's nice and big. Uh, so I still have domination there. And he might be afraid that I'm going to set up realignments on Zaya. But again, that's what he tried doing at 2-2. Two -two. So no deal. He'll dump, if he's got sense and he's got it, he'll dump South America now for nothing. Middle East is scoring him six. So, <clears throat> I mean, the, the South America Middle East combo puts me below War Games territory. He didn't purge me for the headline. That's lovely. He's more worried about ABM Treaty. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, the next coup target. So, I'm going to Latin American Debt Crisis. Ditch the Reformer. And I'm going to coup Sudan. And this time I hope not to roll a one. Good. That's fine. So I maintain the domination of stakes in Africa. Pershing, I really want to space because I don't want to give them the VP and also it's going to break domination, which is just another thing for me to repair. Okay. He now can't do stuff with Chernobyl. Um... So the question is, where's the best target here? I can... The problem with Zaya overprotected, I can't get control there. So South America is an option, because I can then break Argentina and he can't do a lot about it. I'm not so worried about Europe. Asia is currently mine. <clears throat> Middle East I'm in big trouble with anyway. So I kind of feel like, yeah, South Africa seems like a decent target here. Um... Because I could break both and then he have no presence as well. Uh, that said, I expect him to not have South America scoring on him. So it's just another job for him to repair in turn 10. So he's probably going to play into Africa to reduce domination. Just a straight back coup. So that didn't go great for him. But, oh no, so I do still, like, duh, because yes, it didn't go well for him at all because I retained domination because he didn't play into Sudan. So that's a, the first opportunity for me to break one of his South American countries. I now have domination there, so if he hasn't played the card quickly enough, he's going to get stung with it. But I don't expect him, it's AR6, I don't expect him to hold any scoring cards because he should have dumped them by now. Middle Eastern scoring, he would have played immediately, so I don't expect to see that. Um, obviously, I have to watch out for another realignment on AR1. Um, so I want to try and drop DEFCON in the headline if I can, but we will bury you as a major concern, obviously. Um, and UN intervention has gone, so I can't be the cheeky one who drops DEFCON with it. Um, NORAD might come in handy. All right, so he's nailed his colours to the mast here. It's now... What, 7-6? Seven, 7-6. Six. Uh, seven, six. So I think he's got Africa scoring. Um, 
I, do, I genuinely do. So I'm going to use Reagan Bombs Livia, and of course I'm now hoping myself not to roll a one. And I don't, so I do get Domination, AR7, I expect to see Apolis scoring here. He's pretty much telegraphed, so that's where the Ops War is. And if he doesn't have any, obviously we're expecting a whole bunch of scoring cards to come out. Interesting. So where's he queuing? Okay, so he's given me nuclear subs. At this point... Mm, what I, at this point... So I do want to keep North Sea Oil for... Um, it's three Western European countries. So he can't do anything with Poland. Uh, Italy's still pretty strong. NATO's in, so no brush war. This is, stays controlled. So he, uh, he'll he probably take it out of um, Canada for NORAD. Uh, but NORAD's irrelevant in turn 10. So I want, I want to coup Zaire with nuclear subs um, for control. And I get it. Still spent longer on this game than um, uh, usual 45 games. Um, all right, so yeah, I expect him to take out of Canada, obviously UK for special relationship, um, and then France. Uh, it's it's basically an invitation for him to not hit me with, for me not to hit him with NORAD. Um, it does drop domination, but obviously I'll have extra turns in round eight. So that all depends what I get here. So let's see what comes out. Asia, great. Middle East, of course, I can hold until the bitter end now. So that's a bonus for me. I've got special relationship, which is lovely. Um, ask not looks great, but I've only got decal, really, which will be my whole card anyway. So I could always ask not that for North Seoul. Anyway, Asia's going to score me seven. And special relationship once I play back into it. So that's my end game. I guess I play Junta if I want to drop Defcon and then forget North Sea Oil. Because now I have a route to VP success, and obviously Africa can't be cooed. So I'll change my plans thanks to Junta. He may, we will bury you, in which case Africa's going to score big anyway. I think, I mean, yeah, so at this point, I can't lose by Defcon suicide with the cards I have. Uh, I've got to play my scoring cards, obviously. I can't hold Middle East till AR8. Um, but. You know, my VP's advanced. I've still got domination because of the way he pulled stuff out of Europe. What are you going to do, you know? Um, he's got too many fish to fry. And he's going to raise DEFCON to five. In which case, that change about tax. There we go. That's much nicer. So he's going to raise DEFCON to 5 and just go completely coup crazy. Which is fine. I'm hoping to score Asia for 7, play into the UK and special relationship to end the game. All before he's had a chance to do that. Because he's going to be racing around the board, fixing problems, basically. So I think I go AR1 if if he doesn't play into Asia, AR1 Asia scoring, AR2 use independent reds to shore up the UK and Canada because he'll be dropping DEFCON, um, AR3 special relationship, uh, 20 points, game over. That would be lovely. That's the ideal. Um, the less ideal, oh, I, I, can, I, I can obviously ask not. So he's, he's failed. So immediately I go, okay, Asia. Unfortunate for him. So let him keep queuing. I can ask not these, of course. You'll be unhappy to see Middle East scoring go. Um, I don't really need to terrorism him. I'm not so worried about DEFCON suicide at this point. Although he may be holding grain sales because he can't space it anymore. Uh, obviously, with the DEFCON high, now's the time to play it. War Games goes. 
Yep, that's fine. So I'll just focus on my fundamentals. I've got a route to VP success, and I'm going to take it. That's seriously risky. Uh, that's not a good realignment because I'm, um, I'm, I'm even with him. I didn't like that. Okay, War Games has gone to. He's obviously not aware of, not worrying, or not fearing the cards that allow you to pull out extra stuff. But anyway, UK and Canada. I kind of just look like I'm shoring him back up. He doesn't know I have special relationships, um, so he doesn't necessarily know this is the end, my friend. Uh, to quote. A Vietnam related track. Um, but there we go. So um, I hope to see a coup. Yep, so that's fine. No VPs. Doesn't matter. Wherever you go. Congratulations. I say good game. Special relationship. Into West Germany just to break control and rub salt into the wounds. And there it is. So he took about 50 minutes, 1 hour 40, oh no, um, I genuinely welcome any and all feedback, it's as simple as that, I am clearly not a great player, tolerable is fine, uh, unsurprisingly, obviously when I saw how many games he played, that's a massive drop in his rating, um, because he's played so few games and he now has a losing record as the USSR. I hit the 1600, which is lovely. Much obliged. Um, yeah, any and all feedback, genuinely welcomed. Um, I will have made mistakes and I want to hear about them and I'd love for you to tell me because that's the only way I'll learn. Uh, if you really have listened this far, um, drop me a PM on Reddit, I guess. Username Cardlinger. Sorry, can't even pronounce my name. Um, and maybe I'll give you some more messages and thanks and send you a present for being so attentive because uh, I can't imagine anyone but me would actually wade through this but respect if you have many thanks um, and I'll see you in the next bracket fantastic end of the game and I'm going to say goodbye to FF Split thanks again